Holy Chapel service will start in... Let your glory fear this place. Let your glory fill this place. Let your people fall with reverence. We exalt thee.
Holy Travel, put your hands together. All right, Sopranos, here we go. Sing glory. that realizes how good the Lord has been. Why don't you say thank you? Come on, he's been that good. He's been better than that. Somebody ought to say thank you. 
You are not mine on this holy day. You just lift your hands to God and shout hallelujah. 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 Turn to your neighbor. Look your neighbor in the eye. Say, neighbor. I love you. There's not a thing in the world you can do about it. Turn to another and share that same sentiment by saying, neighbor, I love you. And there's not a thing you can do about it. Now, here's what I really want you to do. I want you to talk to the house on the other side and just throw them a hello kiss. Uh, go on and throw them a hello kiss. Give it back to them. Come on, choir members. Come on, choir members. Throw the house a kiss this morning. Come on, church. Throw the choir some love. Somebody here to press and to worship God today. And I want you to know that nobody can do you like Jesus. Oh, well, now. For me. Lord.
to the ground. I won't go back. I won't go back. Oh, no, I can't. No, I can't. I can't go back. I won't go back. I won't go back. I won't go back. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. My soul said yes. My soul said Didn't this choir bless us today? Oh, we're having a hallelujah good time. This choir said that they won't go back. And they are ministering to our spirits, to our hearts, and even our souls. I'm delighted to see each of you in the house this morning. I that you are enjoying the fellowship and the presence of the Lord in the house. I look over there, my good friend, Sister Renee Bates. Wave your hand over there, darling. She's just all in the service. She said, ain't no way, ain't no way. Amen. And I saw Sister Lee out there who, uh, she's been hanging around here for a few Sundays from what I understand. And uh, I don't know exactly where she came from, but it doesn't look like she's going back. <laughs> and we're glad to have her, and we're glad to have each of you uh, in the house today. We serve a good God. Not only that, he's worthy of our praise and our adulations. I'm thankful to have all of these preachers also. And I, I want to give a shout out to uh, Reverend Ralph Prince, uh, who did such a yeoman's job on last week in my absence. Yes, uh, also, uh, Reverend Porter, I was here on the fourth Sunday, but he preached his heart out. Amen. I'm happy to have back in our presence our beloved uh, Reverend Arnold Webb. Amen. 
Pastor Donnie Causey's in the house. And last but not least, Sister, Reverend Sister Gloria Calhoun. I, I want to say last, but I, actually, we got another preacher out there, uh, Reverend Pastor Minister uh, Daryl Lewis is in the house. Stand up, Rev. That's him right there. That's him right there. God bless you. God bless you. And we're just happy to be in fellowship with one another. These, these are perilous times. Amen. And we're just thankful that the Lord is providing uh, a, a form of safety for our worship and our praise. And we owe him a great debt, a debt of gratitude. Look at your neighbor and said he paid everything else. But I owe him gratitude. Amen. Amen. When the world seems cold and your friends Disappoint me right. Sometimes the tears, sometimes the tears, sometimes the tears fill your eyes. There's someone who cares for you. There's someone, someone who cares. I've got someone to share. Someone I can tell all my problems to. He'll come down from the sky. He'll wipe your tears from your weeping eyes. If you're his child, he cares. God cares for you. someone someone who cares I got someone to share someone I can tell all my problems too 
How many know what I'm talking about? Whoa. God will come down. Down from the sky. He'll, he'll wipe your tears from your weeping eyes. If you is child, I know God cares. God cares for you. Someone, 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 someone. I know God cares. I got someone. I know he's willing to share. Someone. I can't tell all my Oh, God will, God will, God will, God will, God will. Come down. Surely he'll wipe your tears, all of your tears from your eyes. If you is child, I know God cares. God cares for you. Oh Lord. Someone, someone. Someone who cares. Ooh, I got me someone. I know he's willing to share. Someone I can tell all my problems to. Oh, God will, God will, God will come down. Show wipe your tears from your weeping eyes. If you is child, I know he cares. If you is child, I know God really, 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 really cares. If you his child, he cares. today that knows the Lord cares? Has he been good to you? Has the Lord been good to you? Oh, yes. I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. I know the Lord cares. Yes. Yes. Yes, he brought me out. He brought me through. Uh, he picked me up, turned my soul around. Uh, isn't God all right? Uh, I said, isn't God all right? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, 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 oh, 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 yes. Can't nobody. Do us quite like him. Do I have a witness in the house? Do I have a witness in the house? You ought not be ashamed uh, to be a witness for the Lord. Uh, tell somebody uh, the Lord is all right. Go on and tell somebody uh, he's been good to me. Uh, you ought to tell somebody uh, he's all I need. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Isn't he worthy? Isn't the Lord worthy? 
Isn't he all right? I don't mean any harm. I got to try to calm myself down. But ain't no harm praising the Lord. Yes. Oh, Lord. Go on and give him some glory. Go on and give him some glory. I may not know what he's done for you, but I sure know today what he's done for me. He brought me out. He picked me up. He turned my poor soul around. He's worthy, I tell you. The Lord is worthy. Months ago, I talked to you from the Gospel of St. Luke, and the Spirit of the Lord led us back to that same sad text. It may have been three months or better ago out of Luke chapter 2. And if I can recall, we, talk, we talked about losing sight of Jesus. And the Lord dropped that in my spirit again. Uh, and he gave me the same text but with a different message. That's what I like about the word of God. It's alive. Amen. You can see one thing and then come back and see another thing without distorting the first thing that he showed you. Can I get a witness? Out of this particular text, I want to read once again into your hearing verses 41 through 45. Now, pay particular attention because the choir just said they wouldn't go back. But that depends on what you're going back after. All right. Beginning at the 41st verse, it says, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But 
they supposing him to have been in the company. When a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, uh-oh, they had to turn back again to Jerusalem seeking him. I want to talk from this subject this morning, looking for Jesus. Look, looking for Jesus, looking for Jesus. When we first visited this particular passage, we talked about the pretense of losing sight of something that was significant. I don't know how you feel about it, but uh, oft times I find myself misplacing things and it's not that they're lost but they just out of sight I, I, I know I'm not the only one that uh, can get ready to leave home and can't find your car keys now, here's the, here's the irony about this, when you lose in sight. Losing sight says that you know they got to be in the house because you last used the key to lock the car and to get in the house. And now that you are prepared to leave the house, You've lost sight of where you placed them. Understand that they're not lost. They're just out of sight. I wish I had a witness here. And, and, and the significance of knowing that something is there and you can't find it can drive you crazy. I remember not too long ago. Spending all day cleaning up my house and trying to get it presentable. And when I couldn't find my keys, all the work I had done straightened it out. <laughs> By the time I found the keys, the house looked just like it looked before I. Y'all don't, don't hear me. Sometimes you can lose sight of something that is significant that you know got to be in the house. And because it's significant, you won't stop looking for it until you find it. That's how come I believe God sent me back to the passage because I didn't want to leave anybody hanging. You, you see, because if you got something important to do, you're not going to just lose your keys and sit down and say, I won't go. You're going to tear up everything until you find the one thing that is significant to you at that moment. So, our text today tells us of uh, a family that had not only lost sight of something, but the significance of what they had seemingly couldn't find was important enough that they would retract their steps and determine when it was that they last saw him. I don't mean any harm, but I've been through that process a few times to where I looked every, I, I, there's an old saying, isn't it ironic how you always find them in the last place you look? And that's a reason because of that. Because if you find it, then you don't have to look anymore. 
I wish I had somebody with me. And, and therefore, and, and therefore, and therefore, uh, the Bible says that they look for Jesus. Uh, in stark contrast to the apocryphal gospels, uh, spurious tales about the young boy Jesus and his idea of working miracles and supernatural exploits that had been credited to him. This long biblical insight into the youth of Jesus uh, portrays him as just a typical boy in a typical family. Now, I don't, I don't mean any harm, but you know, uh, sometimes uh, you can uh, let circumstances drive you out of your mind. Have you ever walked around thinking, I must be losing it? I wish I had a witness. Because some things are so valuable to you. Some things are so significant that you can't believe that you can't find it. And so I share with you that Jesus came up missing. Uh, and he lingered, uh, not because of his mischievousness, not because he was trying to be disobedient, uh, but it was owing to a simple mistaken presumption on the parts of his parents. Don't mean any harm. Follow me if you will. A lot of people want to say, well, he was just a regular old boy, but I'd stop by to tell you that in this scenario, he was not lost. You just had to find him. And, and his being absent from view did not mean uh, that he was misbehaving. But it meant that you were under a mistaken presumption that where you last saw him, he would still be there. Now, here is the irony that I have to deal with, and some of you perhaps can help me qualify it, but uh, they, they, the Bible said that they had spent a whole day before they even missed him. Hmm, that's, that's a travesty. How do you go a whole day without recognizing that you haven't seen your child? And so when they discovered that he was gone, their presumption was that the entourage, that they were traveling in as they left Jerusalem, going back to Nazareth, having attended the feast of the Passover, that he just must be somewhere in the crowd. I can see Mary trying to tell Joseph, here, he, look, just look, look at his finest auntie. I wish I had a witness. Maybe, maybe he's with her. Find, find where he is at, Joseph. Go, go ahead now. Um, but when they looked among the usual places, the Bible said that he still wasn't there. Mm. Obviously, Joseph and Mary, uh, Mary, who were traveling together, no doubt there were as many as hundreds of people from their community that had gone into Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of the Passover. And, and, and the Passover only lasts a day, but after the Passover, there was a week-long celebration, so I don't know how long they stayed there, but it took them a day to recognize that Jesus was not with them on the journey home. And so they surmise that the best thing that they need to do is to go back 
uh, since he wasn't with kinfolk, we need to go back and find where he is. Now, again, I say to you, the presumption is that he was lost, but he wasn't. They were. I wish I had a witness. You know, sometimes we, 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 we mess up with uh, misnotions uh, uh, that something is that isn't or something isn't that obviously is. And in this case, they thought he was lost. But when I stopped to put things in perspective and I thought about how I would feel uh, if I couldn't find my child, and I experienced that too. I, 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 any, you, you experienced that, Doc? Yes, I experienced that years ago uh, when my baby up here in the choir, when she was, she must have been three or four years old. I put her in the car with us and we went down to uh, Magic Mountain. And uh, no sooner than I got there, I looked around and she was nowhere. And I looked up and I saw this crowd of people. And I couldn't find my baby. And my wife said, you better find that girl. <laughs> so, so, so frantically, I had to search this park. Got in touch with the authorities trying to find out was there a child that was taken to the lost and found. I had just gotten there, y'all. It was about 10 o'clock that morning. About 4.30 that evening, I finally get a call that tells me to come to the office and tell, identify this child whether or not it's ours. Well, you know, from 10 to 4, that's a long time. And, 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 and even, though, even though I determined that God blessed us to locate her, my mind can't help but to wonder what would we have done if we couldn't have found her. That goes back to the heart of the text which I can even call a pretext, if you will, because when it comes to Jesus, he was not just an ordinary child. And when it comes to his capacity, I don't know what I would do without him. You know, sometimes we take for granted. We, get, we go to bed at night automatically thinking we're going to get up in the morning. Now, do I have a witness? We, we go to bed at night thinking that everything is going to be hunky-dory tomorrow, and you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. I wish I had a witness. All you know for certain is that when it comes to your faith and the reality of your relationship, all your help. Y'all don't hear me. Come from Jesus. That's how come the Bible said, I lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh. Come on, y'all with me here. Because my help. I don't know where you get your help from, but my help. My help comes from the Lord. Somebody might say, well, who, 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 who are you looking for? I, I'm looking for that one that made heaven and the earth. I'm looking for him that stepped out in the midst of nowhere and spoke a word and everything that was not became present. He said, let there be. I don't mean any harm, but when you can get an audience with God, no matter what your trials are, he's able to work things out for you. And so I, I, I looked at this text. I looked at this text, and I, I, I discovered that it was three days before they actually found Jesus. 
But now the truth of the matter is that we don't know that they were, had gone back to Jerusalem and looked for Jesus three days. But we do know that they had traveled a day's journey from Jerusalem going home. And so if Jesus was not among us, that means that they had to at least travel another day to get back to Jerusalem. And I, I, I perceive, I perceive in my spirit that, uh, that that being two days, they probably spent another whole day just looking for him. Yeah, am I right about it? And, 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 and I stop to tell you that uh, um, uh, that required a lot of time that, Lord help me, they had to deliberate among themselves in need of searching uh, cautiously and thoroughly to find out where he was. Now, look at verse number 46. It says, and it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of doctors, hearing them, asking them questions. And all that heard him were astounded. Astonished. They were astonished at his understanding. Now, this boy was 12 years old. And he's talking to doctors and lawyers. And they were astonished to find out his answers. And so the Bible says they heard him and they saw him and they were amazed and his mother said unto him, son, why hast thou dealt thus with us? And in other words, sometimes you, you, you use folk as a scapegoat. Note that I'm certain that Mary didn't mean any harm. It was just nature. And so when she found him, the first thing she said is, boy, you put us through a lot of pain. Do I have a witness here? And, 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 and Jesus had to respond to, to that. He, she said unto him, your father and I have been looking for you sorrowfully for three days. And Jesus said to her, how is it that thou sought me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business. Now, note that the idea that he's speaking in terms of his father, that he's not referencing uh, uh, his stepfather, Joseph, because Joseph was his stepfather. Uh, Mary was his biological mother, but his biological daddy, <laughs> they call him H.G. <laughs> he was the Holy Ghost. Do I have a witness here? And Mary knew from that moment because Gabriel came down and told Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace. Can't you see the angel standing there saying, I just stop by I, I just stop by I just stop by to tell you that God has found favor with you. And you're gonna bear a child and you're gonna call his name Jesus. I wish I had a witness. And and he shall deliver your people from all sin and unrighteousness. Look at your neighbor and say, so Mary knew. She, she knew who Jesus was. Joseph may have had some issues, but Mary knew. You, you, you see, Joseph had to accept what Mary said, which is something that most of us brothers wouldn't do if we had to die. I, I wish I had a witness here. 
because they were a spouse. They were engaged to be married. And before the ceremony could take place, whoops, y'all don't hear me. Mary, what, what you say going on? And she said, don't worry, Joseph, this is the Holy Ghost doing. Well, you see, most brothers are not going to accept that. I can remember the day I wouldn't have accepted that. I, I, I would have I would, I would, I would, I said, you know what I would have said. Let me get to that man. You see, you see, because what was happening in uh, uh, Mary's life was biologically. But when the Holy Ghost got involved, there was little comprehension between biological offsprings and what is going on in the world of a God that has infinite capacity. And so how do you explain to somebody who's still carnal at mind that I haven't betrayed you, but last night. <laughs> that, that, Joseph, last night I had a visitor. You see, I would have said, I got your visitor. <laughs> I, I, I had a visitor. And, 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 and we're going to call him H.G. Uh, and, 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 and who is he? Where he come from? But it took God to send the angel back to Joseph. You see... When you've seen something supernaturally, it caused your spiritual mind to be quickened and awakened. You see, you can't believe things that you haven't experienced. Uh, seeing is not always believing, but you, ex you experience some stuff that you can't see. Do I have a witness? And the angel told Joseph, don't, don't worry about it. She's telling you the truth. In the middle of the night, the Holy Ghost came in and sired the child. And, and, and Joseph had nothing more to say. He wanted to put her away privately. But when the angel made it clear, you see, because Mary saw the angel. But the angel also came back and told Joseph, leave her alone. Don't put her away. This is God's doing. And so I can imagine only that uh, when they realized that they've been looking for Jesus three days. And when they finally found him, Mary couldn't have any other explanation for all those that were in the search party with her. Other than the fact to antagonize him by saying, why did you put us through this? Your daddy and I, we've been looking for you for three days. And he just politely said, uh, how, is that, how is it that you looked for me for three days? Uh, you knew that I had business at my father's house. Do, do I have a witness here? And you see, the place where he spoke with the doctors and the lawyers was an extension of the temple. That same temple that uh, Jesus one day walked into and overturned the money table and told him that it is written that my house should be called the house of prayer, but you made it a den of thieves. And so my brothers and my sister. The required time for the discovery took longer than some of us can even imagine. But listening to them and asking questions, he was 
utterly respectful, taking the role of a student, if you will. But even at that young age, his questions showed wisdom that put teachers to shame. Why? Because he was a byproduct of a God that had always been and that always will be. From the very beginning, he stepped out in the midst of nothing and created everything. From the very beginning, he had a conversation with himself and said, let us make man. We want to make him in our own image and in our own likeness. I wish I had a praying church. And in my mind's eye, I can see the Lord bending over to the dust of the ground and making, molding, and fashioning a little human clay person. You know, I used to have a little time in the yard. Maybe I'm the only one that used to play in mud every now and then. But it was something different about when the Lord began to sculpt a clay model. He created a man out of the dust of the earth. If you don't mind my saying, he was particular. He made little clay balls and gave the clay image eyes and he made a little clay and attached ears to each side of his head and he began to create him in his own likeness and in his own image. Can I get a witness here? But every now and then my mind goes back and remind me that I probably could have made the same thing but something was different in the way I would have made him and in the way God made him. Because I would have made him and I would have seen effort to be able to tear him up, but I couldn't put him back together again. But when God made man, something began to happen differently. Uh, he created him uh, a little clay nose and uh, kneeled down uh, and blew into his nostril uh, the breath of life. And uh, the Bible says uh, man became uh, a living soul. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, and I'm glad today uh, that God has the infinite capacity uh, to do anything but fail. Uh, is that right? Uh, I'm so glad uh, that it took me a while uh, to really understand the uniqueness of our humanity. Uh, is that right? Uh, but Paul said one day uh, in him, uh, I live uh, in him, uh, I move, uh, and in him, uh, I found my being. Uh, isn't the Lord all right? Uh, oh, Lord, uh, I heard uh, the Hebrew writer uh, come along and said, uh, Wherefore, uh, seeing that we are also uh, compassed about, uh, with such a great cloud of witnesses, uh, let us, look at your neighbor and say, let us, uh, let us uh, lay a sign uh, every weight uh, and every sin uh, that does so easily beset us. Uh, and let us uh, run with patience. Uh, this race uh, that's been set before us, uh, is that right? Uh, and I'm glad uh, sometime I have good days uh, and sometimes I have bad days. Uh, sometimes uh, the clouds hang low. Uh, sometimes uh, my mind gets all distorted and uh, sometimes uh, I move to a state of depression. Uh, 
great God. But I heard that the sweet secret is looking for Jesus. Is that right? I heard uh, the Hebrew writer said uh, we can make it uh, looking unto Jesus uh, who is the author, uh, who is the finisher of our faith. Uh, is that right? Uh, who for the joy uh, that was set before him, uh, he endured some things. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, look at your neighbor uh, and tell your neighbor uh, you can make it. Uh, but you got to endure some things. Uh -huh. You can make it, uh -huh. but you got to go through something. Uh -huh. You can make it, uh -huh. great God. Uh -huh. Sometimes uh -huh. your burdens would get heavy, uh -huh. but he'll lighten your load. Uh -huh. Am I right about it? Uh -huh. Sometimes uh -huh. you have to make it in uh -huh. on me go in. Uh -huh. Is that right? Uh -huh. But I stop by to remind you uh -huh, that you can't be God's giving uh, because the more you give uh, the more he'll give to you uh, am I right about it uh, and I heard uh, I tell you I heard uh, for the joy uh, that was set before him uh, he was willing uh, to endure the cross uh, despising the shame and, uh, and now uh, it sat down uh, at the right hand of the throne of God uh, is that right uh, you ought to be glad uh, that trouble uh, won't last always uh, am I right about it uh, you ought to be glad uh, that trial and tribulation will all be over. You ought to be glad that our sin have been vindicated. Is that right? Not in the name of Joseph. No, 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 no. Not in the name of Mary. Not in the name of the president. Not in the name of the governor. But in the name of Jesus. Am I right about it? I look to him. All my help comes from the Lord. All I need comes from him. They crucified him one Friday evening. Do I have a witness? Uh, they let him out uh, of a Roman courtyard uh, onto a dusty road uh, called the Via Della Rosa uh, that led uh, upward way uh, to a hill called Calvary. Is that right? Uh, on his way, uh, he picked up my sin uh, and put him on his shoulder. Uh, is that right? Uh, he sinned. Uh, oh, Lord. Uh, not by commission, uh, but by omission. Uh, he sinned uh, because he came to our sin, uh, and they led him, uh, a sinless man, uh, up to a hill uh, called Calvary. Uh, I wish I had one or two witnesses in the house. Uh, on Calvary, uh, the Bible said uh, they stretched him wide. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, on Calvary, uh, they lived lifted him high uh, on Calvary. Uh, come on and help me here. They dropped the Savior low. Uh, am I right about it? On oh, Calvary, uh, they crucified him. Uh, is that right? Uh, from the sixth to the ninth hour. Uh, and here's what you got to understand. Uh, he died. Uh, is that right? Uh, he didn't faint. Uh, he didn't pass out. Uh, he wasn't comatose. Uh, the Bible said uh, he died uh, on Calvary. Uh, is that all right? And uh, they buried him, uh, oh Lord, uh, in Joseph's new tomb. Uh, is that right? Uh, and all night, uh, I wish I had a witness, uh, he laid right there. Uh, is that right? Uh, all day, uh, Saturday, uh, he stayed right there. Uh, and all night, uh, Saturday night, uh, he stayed right there. Uh, but I heard the Bible said, uh, don't worry, uh, weeping uh, may endure uh, only for a night. Uh, but if you hang on in there, uh, joy uh, is coming in the morning. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, joy uh, 
which when you think of not, uh, it'll come in the morning. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, look at your neighbor uh, and somebody know the story. Uh, you know what to say. Uh, look at him and holler uh, and say, early, early, early. Sunday morning, uh, just when I thought uh, all hope was gone, uh, down in the cemetery, uh, became a rocking and a shaking. Uh, down in the cemetery, uh, I heard death uh, call up the grave, uh, and grave told death uh, that something is wrong here. Is that right? Uh, death said, how can I help you? He said, this man uh, that you delivered to me, uh, he got up. Uh, early this morning uh, do i have a witness uh, death said well uh, did you sting him well uh, did you sting him well he said yes uh, i stung him well uh, i stung him uh, the same way uh, i did abraham uh, and there he lay uh, there he lay right there uh, isaac and jacob uh, he a human uh, is right over there uh, but I heard uh, something about the man. Uh, they called Jesus. Uh, it was early uh, this morning. Uh, he shook me off. Uh, got up out of the grave. Uh, stood up on a rock uh, and declared, uh, All power, uh, all power uh, is in my hand. Uh, isn't God all right? Uh, I'm a witness. I said, I'm a witness that God will supply your every need. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? He brought me from a mighty long way. I heard sometime the lightning flash. Sometime the thunder roars. Sometime the Nail bash the hat uh, trying to conquer my soul. Uh, is that right? Uh, but I heard the voice of Jesus said, uh, I promise uh, never to leave you uh, nor to betray you. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, look at your neighbor and said, I'm glad. Uh, I said, I'm glad uh, that he got up uh, because when he got up, uh, it told a dying world uh, that I can get up uh, because I live uh, because of him. Uh, in him, uh, I have my being. Uh, am I all right? Uh, tell somebody uh, he will uh, provide uh, your every need. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Uh, somebody that got some wind, uh, I just want you to say, yeah. Come on and help me here. Yeah. I need some hollows in the house. Somebody ought to say yes. Somebody ought to who know who the Lord is. Uh, don't be ashamed. Uh, tell somebody. Yeah. He got up uh, with all power. Isn't God all right? Uh, do you love him? Uh, do you love him? Uh, look at your neighbor and say, God cares. Uh, God cares for you. Uh, Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, no matter what you're going through, God will supply your every need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. You can't get no better than hallelujah because he's my everything. Do I have a witness? Yeah, if you don't have hope, go find Jesus. If you don't have an answer, go find Jesus. If you're dealing with issues that's greater than you are able to bear, go find him and tell him what you want. And he will supply your every need. Will you stand with me this morning? Will you stand with me? Turn to the closest neighbor now and just look at him 
and say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm giving my all to Jesus because he's given his all to me. Now, I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but one thing I do know, I know who holds tomorrow. And I got a feeling here that somebody in the house that has gone through something can use a blessing from the Lord. Somebody say, don't put off for tomorrow what you can do.